Oh my. Trespassing, vandalism, littering. Animals do all of these things that we humans call crime, but obviously they're animals. You know, you can't find them. You can't tell them what the law is. So what do you do? How do you deal with that in a way that's fair to the animals, fair to the people? My name is Mary Roach, and I wrote the book Buzz, When Nature Breaks the Law. Science writer Mary Roach says human animal encounters are on the rise and that we need to be better about coexisting with the fauna among us. There's been a lot of activity, a lot of humans calling wildlife agencies about bears this year. And some of that is, I think, has to do with COVID and the fact that over the past year, people have been out in nature more because they don't have a lot of alternatives. They're like, let's go hiking. So there's people out in bears territory, at least here in California, we have a drought. So you're seeing some wildlife coming out of the woods sooner than they might. And when I say conflict, that could just be somebody going, oh my God, there's a bear in the yard. Or somebody saying a bear ripped off the door of my house and is in my kitchen eating ice cream. Freaking bear, get out of my garage. The vast majority of the time, bears are not a, a threat to your own safety. They may be uh, causing damage to property. Shoot, bear, shoot! That's not to say all is copacetic with bear encounters. There's bears in the pool! Things tend to escalate. The bears get more used to being around people. They start to lose their fear. They start to get a little more aggressive and going after the food. Oh my God, I never see this before in all my life. And they're coming closer and they're seeing that there's rewards there. We have a bear attempting to get into a house and he's not afraid of noise, screaming or yelling or pounding. The closer the two get together, then you start to really have trouble. Somebody gets hurt and then the bear gets uh, put down. And so, and that's very sad. So what's the proper etiquette around bears? People and bears are both better off when they maintain some distance. So, you know, keep the garbage secured. If you have a lot of bears around, a bear resistant container uh, for the garbage and don't leave pet food out in a bowl or in a bag. Bird feeders are also very appealing to bears. They're very good at getting at them. Don't give them a reason to come closer and closer because they're big and they're strong and they can cause damage and they can uh, hurt you. I mean, they rarely do, but um, it's best to respect them from a distance, enjoy them from a distance. Climate change isn't making things any easier for human bear relations. There was a study done out of Colorado that looked at hibernation and how temperature affects hibernation. And with, with uh, temperatures rising, with global warming, what we're gonna see is shorter hibernation periods. And that means more days out on the land, more days competing for food with uh, other bears, more days when bears might be tempted to look for food in your backyard. I mean, for every two degree increase Fahrenheit, it's a week shorter hibernation. So by 2050, the projection was there'd be 15 to 40 days shorter. So that's a lot more time for bears to be out there looking for food, interacting with people. So that's bears. But what about encountering big cats like mountain lions? They're a true carnivore. They are a predator. Bears are a little bit, you know, they're tearing the garbage open and they're, you, know, you have a sense that they're, they're not the kind of predator that is really strikes fear the way a big cat can. They are very effective killers. They're so stealthy. Their prey rarely knows what's about to hit them until they hit. And they just go right for the back of the neck and they, and they do a killing bite and it's um, over very fast. There was a mountain lion attack. My three-year-old child, it like knocked him over and got him by the neck. I mean, he's okay, but he got a pretty good cut on his neck. What often happens with mountain lions and people, someone's hiking with a dog or dogs. The dogs smell the cat and there's some sort of altercation. And then what happens is something they, in the wildlife world they call attack redirection, where the, the person tries to you know, pull the dog back and the cat turns on the person. In general, they're so stealthy, you may have hiked right by one and never known it because they're, uh, they're not interested in people. They're mostly going after deer or small animals. They're not, they don't know what to make of people. You know, they're kind of, what? 
Are we supposed to do backup? I don't know. Now what are you supposed to do? I don't know. I don't think you're supposed to run or go away from it. If you do come face to face with a mountain lion. If you sort of make yourself big and make noise, back slowly away, never run. That's the one very important piece of information about mountain lions is to back away slowly because if you run or mountain bike away, if that cat is already seeing you as a predator, it triggers this response to chase. And so that's bad. The key is to avoid any unnecessary encounters and to try to just get along. Coexistence to me is the goal for harmony between people and animals. And when I say coexistence, it's mostly kind of a, an attitude shift, especially for some of the backyard wildlife in urban areas. There's a tendency to just think nuisance, pest, get rid of it. Oh, and they're now on the field. We have a deer timeout. When you talk about problem animals, there's a tendency to think, oh, how can we change the animal's behavior? Most of the instances that um, I talk about in the book, it's almost more as the problem humans. You know, it's people leaving trash unsecured, people feeding Canada geese till it's a problem and you have to go and kill some of them. Or that's the approach that the city takes. It's a human behavior problem, not an animal behavior problem in so many cases. And if people can just kind of think about the bigger picture and what that is going to mean for those animals, I think that's kind of the takeaway that, that humans are kind of more the problem than the animals. And, and that's good news because it's easier to change human behavior than it is to change animal behavior. Roach says we should be grateful to be able to share the planet with animals. It's just it's endlessly amazing and awesome to me that this amazing variety of wild creatures are right around us, that they're still out there. As much as we've messed up this planet and we've done things poorly, I mean, they're still out there, lots of them, fewer than there were, but it's, it's just really special. This is Inside Edition Digital.